Alright you guys, so for today I'm going to make you guys these videos. Um, don't worry, we'll be back on Zoom tomorrow. But I wanted to go into a couple of things with more detail and that's why I like to make you these videos. In case you're absent, you guys can watch them or you know view them when you can. So don't forget to do your box notes. Um, yesterday you guys were supposed to start your chapter 4 and read the que read, do the reading questions. Today you guys are going to read chapter 5 and do the reading questions. Um, I really want you guys to be ready to talk about everything from chapters 1 through 5 on Wednesday on Zoom. Please make sure you're keeping up with your reading. I hope you are. I'm a little bit um, not sure why uh, we only have so many rough drafts. I don't want to embarrass any of you, but we are missing without going and embarrassing you guys. Let me go back into here. So we are still missing 18 of you on your narrative rough draft. You guys will not be able to do your final draft. That's worth 100 points if you guys don't turn in your narrative rough draft. What's going to happen is I'm going to give you guys notes on what needs work, and then you're going to have a couple of your classmates look at your rough draft. You guys are going to give each other some notes on what you think. You know, what does the story need to be improved? What kind of imagery can you add? What kind of figurative language could you add? what would kind of spice up your writing a little bit and don't take it personally because we all have areas of our writing that we need help with and sometimes your classmates might surprise you and be like you know why don't you try this introduction why don't you try a different character something in the story might not be working so you guys are going to be a great resource for each other and i'm going to give you notes as well so please uh, turn in your rough draft. Remember, I wasn't really taking late work unless you send me a little email. Uh, Miss James, uh, my, my paper is late because, you know, my mom wanted me to go somewhere with her or I was sick or something that's just going to explain why. Um, just don't just turn it in anymore. I want you to, guys to tell me why it's late, okay? As you're becoming a high schooler and then a college student, you are slowly going to realize that your teachers and professors want to receive assignments on time. So I feel like it's the best thing for you guys to start learning that right now. Okay. So on here, we have a lot of you who have not turned that in. So please do that. Your box notes. Remember, you only have until chapter four. So you guys are going to need to add more slides. Go to new slide. Okay. I have up until chapter 6 on mine. I am also rereading Tom Sawyer, which I haven't. I did not teach Tom Sawyer last year um, because I had seniors and then I had um, ninth, 10th, and 11th grade. So I didn't get to read Tom Sawyer until about a year or two ago. So I wanted to read it again. And then I've also been taking my own box notes so I can help you guys. So you should have chapters one and two done. Chapter three, remember we're gonna be going over these chapters in class. I feel like it's better if we talk about the book in class. But I just wanted to hit on a couple of things that I noticed about these chapters. Remember next Friday we're gonna be playing um, bingo. We're gonna be playing half of the chapter, I'm sorry, half of the book. We should be up to chapter, I would say 14, 15 by next Friday. So your bingo game for those awesome prizes are going to be um, on half of Tom Sawyer. So make sure you guys are ready for your bingo game next Friday. Also, you guys can use your logical fallacy notes and your box notes. So that even gives you a better chance of doing it. Your logical fallacy notes are going to be due on Friday for a note check. So please make sure you have written them down. They are all ready to go for you on here. All you have to do is copy them, hopefully memorize them, but at least copy them down into your notebook or you can make yourself some notes on your own Google Doc. But every logical fallacy that I want to familiarize you with is going to be right here. If you guys are 
were absent when we went over this. Logical fallacy is going to be a, it only weakens your argument. Um, there are several logical fallacies. In Tom Sawyer, I highlighted about nine or ten of them you should be familiar with. So you have the either or, ad hominem, bandwagon fallacy, slippery slope, <clears throat> straw man, hasty generalization, circular argument, and then appeal to authority. These are the main ones. Um, there are about, I would say, five or a few, five or a bit more, but these are the ones that I've noticed when I read Tom Sawyer that I want you to be familiar with. Remember, these are not, a logical fallacy is not a good thing. A logical fallacy means that someone is trying to um, kind of manipulate you, mess with your brain, um, kind of climb into your argument and destroy it. This is the type of person that's not going to listen to what you have to say. Okay, so you have your logical fallacies. They are on Google Classroom already, so please copy them down. But what I did want to hit on is that a little summary of what I've noticed by reading Tom Sawyer. Don't forget your reading questions are going to be due. I think I made them due Wednesday, either Tuesday or Wednesday. I'll look at that also. Just so we can be familiar with it. Let's see. So on here, I think I, yes, I made these due on Wednesday. So tomorrow at midnight. Okay, that should give you guys plenty of time. If you do not want to actually read this and you are the type of person who likes to be read to like I do, I have my Audible. I enjoy being read to. So if you want to go to YouTube and look up The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Nick Offerman has an awesome um, a version that I've been listening to. So you're welcome to listen to it. You can read it. My main thing is I need you guys to know what's happening. Okay? So remember... Chapter one, he gets caught with jam in the closet and he is basically tries to get away from Aunt Polly. He runs out of the house and sneaks over the fence. We're learning a lot about Tom Sawyer. We're learning that he doesn't have any parents. He lives with Aunt Polly and his half brother Sid. He will do anything to make Polly, Aunt Polly laugh. He doesn't have parents. And now Polly, his mother's sister, is the one that's taking care of him all the time. We're learning that he doesn't want to work. He doesn't like to clean himself. He doesn't like school. So he is, you know, a boy of the world. He wants to go out. He wants to do things. He doesn't care if he gets in trouble. A lot of you guys put that as your attendance question, which is, or your attendance answer. So, but he does get easily annoyed by people that are not like him. So if he sees this boy named Jim, and he is dressed real fancy, and he's from the city, he is one, gonna, going to want to beat him up, okay? So, we should, you guys should remember, Tom Sawyer is unclean, he is all about adventure, he could spend every day on a fishing boat, but unfortunately, society tries to change him into someone that goes to school, into someone that goes to church, and so he rebels and he um, beats up someone that's not like him, okay? So he fights in the mud with um, Jim, and then he goes home, and Aunt Polly's mad at him because he had nice clothes when he left, and now he comes home and he's all dirty. So Aunt Polly says, you're going to be painting the fence tomorrow. You don't have a choice. All right, so then we're going to go over a little bit of this to make sure you guys are ready for our little review we're going to do in class tomorrow. So Aunt Polly says, you're going to paint the fence. And um, little Tom Sawyer goes out there and he starts painting the fence. And he tries to get Jim to paint the fence for him, but Jim is too smart. And he says, no, I'm not doing it. And then he starts to see how, you know, he wishes he could just have a regular Saturday with him, um, you know, doing what he wants, because that's what Tom Sawyer does. He does what Tom Sawyer wants. And then he sees Ben Rogers, and Ben Rogers is living the type of life that Tom Sawyer wants to have. So he's eating an apple, he's twiddling his thumbs, he's acting like a steamboat, 
And so Tom decides, if I'm going to get what I want from Ben Rogers, i got to use my logical fallacies, and I'm not going to give him any attention. So Tom is acting like he really wants to paint the fence, even though he doesn't. And so Ben says, well, how come I can't paint the fence? Why won't you let me do it? So Tom makes it seem like painting the fence is special, and he eventually convinces, using his manipulation and his um, scheming, he convinces Ben to paint the fence for him. Okay, a lot of these are going to be on your bingo card, so I'm hoping you guys are with me. Uh, remember, if you're not the type of person that enjoys reading, I will try to change that, of course, but you can also listen to the book on YouTube. Um, so he makes it appear special, and in the end, he not only gives Tom his apple to get him to paint the fence, but Tom, that's what Tom wanted all along. He wanted someone to do the job for him so he could just enjoy his Saturday. And a big line in chapter two is, does a boy get to wash a, a whitewash a fence every day? So get to means privilege. It means something special. So along the whole day, Tom convinces everybody that they should have a turn at the fence. And in exchange, he not only gets his freedom, he also gets everybody's toys that he kind of manipulates them to give him. Um, she goes home. Aunt Polly says, uh, well, are you ever going to finish the fence? And he says, well, I already did. She doesn't believe him, but she goes out and sees it and can't, can't, uh, you know, can't believe that it's actually finished. And, of course, he's Tom Sawyer, so even though he got an apple, he tries to take a donut behind her, behind her back. Um, he chucks some mud at Sid, and then he sees Becky Thatcher. Becky Thatcher is a big girl in this book. As soon as he sees her, he forgets all about Amy Lawrence, and his little heart has now moved on to someone else. Uh, Sid breaks the bowl, and... He is being uh, manipulative again. His cousin Mary is back from his, her trip to the country. She also lives with Aunt Polly and Tom Sawyer. And then because he's in love, he, remember, he goes to her house and he picks that flower and he, you know, grabs it and sticks it in his coat next to his heart. But now he just goes to her house and lays under her window hoping she's going to come out. He is completely infatuated in love with her. And all he wants to do is for her to look out and just see him laying there. He's doing anything he can to get Becky Thatcher's attention. So we have learned a ton about Tom Sawyer. I find that most people can relate to him in some way. So chapter four is kind of the church chapter. If you guys see that on a quiz or a test and I say which one is the church chapter, you're going to remember chapter four. Um, he is hating anything that's going to change him. Um, so he hates going to church. He hates having to get clean and get dressed for Sunday school. Um, and Mary says that she would give him a knife if he learns his church verses. So they're trying to wash him. They're trying to make sure he's ready for church. And of course, because he's manipulative, Tom Sawyer he believes that he deserves other people's tickets for all of the toys that he got the other kids to give him on the paint fen painting fence day. He exchanges those toys for tickets, and these tickets are going to be good for one of the Bibles that Tom Sawyer is trying to get. Okay, so Mary already has two Bibles, so that just inspires Tom to want a Bible of his own. He does everything he can to try to show off to Becky Thatcher in church. Her father is the new judge in town. And um, we don't know if he actually gets the Bible because at the end of the story, he says, Tom's, I mean, Mark Twain says, let us draw the curtain on the scene, which makes us believe, well, did he get the Bible or did he not? Because um, Tom didn't really know all the information that he should have known that he pretended to know, okay? Uh, Amy Lawrence loved Tom's attention, but now that Tom is giving it to Becky Thatcher, she's heartbroken, and she's going to have to move on from how she feels about Tom. And then we have chapter five, which is, we're going to be going over this again, guys. I think we're running out of time, but he basically goes to church and has to entertain himself. <laughs> 